Hey you guys, in this video I will share with you guys what my experience was like growing up in Japan as a black person. I will also kind of go over a little bit of background on what part of Japan I lived in, why I lived there, and address questions that I was most commonly asked when I moved back to the States. A bit of a background, I lived in Okinawa, Japan, and Okinawa is a small island of Japan that is not connected to mainland Japan. So mainland Japan is where you will find Tokyo. Um, to go to Tokyo from Okinawa, I would have to take a two to three hour flight from the island to mainland Japan to get to Tokyo. Uh, with that being said, I've never been to mainland Japan. I've also never been to Tokyo. So. Okinawa after World War II was um, briefly owned by the U.S. before Japan regained ownership over Okinawa in the 70s. With that being said, Okinawa, Japan has big U.S. influence over its island. Um, Okinawa has a culture that is very distinctly their own um, aside from Japan. So traditional Okinawans refer to them as Okinawans and not Japanese um, and in my schooling living in Okinawa Japan we were taught it's a more respectful approach to um, refer to natives of Okinawa as Okinawans versus um, the Japanese um, so I lived there for six years I lived there for 2000 to 2008 and the reason why I was there is because my dad was in the army he was in the military we were stationed there in general I've lived multiple places I consider Okinawa my home because I feel like my time and the experiences that I had there are what shaped me to be the person that I am today that has always been a very challenging question for me to, to answer where I'm from because it's like I've lived more places than the average American has. I don't really feel that the place I was born in, which is Fayetteville, North Carolina, I don't feel like I'm from there because I only lived there until I was four and I cannot tell you a street name, I couldn't tell you a high school, I couldn't even like tell you a memory about the place so I do not feel connected to Fayetteville North Carolina at all so when I when we first moved there I was 10 years old so when my dad was like okay we're moving there I was like I don't we're gonna be wearing kimonos and living in paper houses this is this is not cool a very ignorant perspective of what to expect from Japan but I was 10 years old so there are palm trees, the weather is tropical, it doesn't get cold, it's sunny all year round. The people, the locals are super, super, so friendly. The sweetest people, very, very safe, super safe. I mean, you can leave your door unlocked, so your car is unlocked, you can leave your money out and um, generally no one will touch it or nothing will happen to you. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've been out as a young gun. I actually didn't even have a curfew living there because it was just that safe. A really good day in Okinawa, Japan would be going off base, spending time at the seawall, which was this wall, this like concrete wall that surrounded the island. Not a good night just to go off base and just sit at the seawall and have good deep conversations. Another part of our good day would be going to Dragon Palace, which is this huge shopping center full of arcades and fun bowling alleys, lots of shopping, lots of dining. And as I can recall it, um, it seemed as if it was always open 24 hours. Like, you know, in the United States, when you go to the mall, things typically close down around 9 p.m. That's not the case over there. Things are open really, really late if they even close at all. Housing. So what was housing like living in Okinawa, Japan? So during my time there, we lived both on and off base. We lived off base for a very brief period of time when we first moved there. I will say that in general, it just seems like their housing and their rooms are built a little bit smaller than what I was used to in America. Um, living on base, um, the sizing of your home was much like 
what you would expect in America, pretty decent size um, rooms, housing, sturdy foundation, all, all of that. Nothing very notable to say there to be honest. They had both older housing and newer housing. So when we first moved on base, we lived in the older housing and then they were knocking those houses down to rebuild them into newer homes. So we were moved into a newer community on base but it was super nice um kind of build in your like tropical style i don't even know how like i don't know the proper way to say it but it was like a tropical like design but it was really really nice uh and i actually have some memories about some spooky memories about our first home in okinawa japan okinawa japan is actually considered one of the most haunted islands in the world Oh my god, the food was so freaking good there. I felt like the Okinawans took so much pride in their food. Japanese McDonald's versus an American McDonald's. So in America, you watch these juicy commercials of your burger. You see some juicy commercials in uh, magazine ads. And then you get your burger at McDonald's and it does not look anything as pictured, but whatever, you eat it anyways. In Japan, what you see is what you get. Your burger is like just as it would on TV or in ad. Their portion sizes are a lot smaller. So the Big Mac in America is truly a Big Mac. The Big Mac in um, Okinawa, Japan is a lot smaller than that. But McDonald's in Japan tastes a lot better than um, the American McDonald's. So I did not go to school off base. I went to school on base, so it was very similar to what you would expect at American school. Japanese class was a requirement and in that class we learned a little bit of the language and we learned the customs and culture and history of Okinawa. Once you go into middle school it's no longer a requirement and you have the option to learn any other language as you please and yeah. A few phrases that I know in Japanese. I do not know Japanese. I cannot carry a conversation with you, but I do know basic terms. One being konnichiwa, which means good morning. Kanbanwa, which means good night. Um, tanea desu ka, which means my name is Tanea. Um, Origato gozaimasu, which means thank you very much. Samimasen, which means excuse me. Don't touch my mustache, which I don't remember what that means. And those are the few phrases that I remember. But interesting enough, when I moved stateside, everyone would always ask me, do you know Chinese? And um, I don't know why I was asked that question. So, okay, so let's get on to the topic that you guys are probably here for, race. So let me kind of paint a picture for you. So my school that i went to or the schools that i went to were relatively diverse i don't remember one particular race being the dominant race in my school i felt like there was a fair mixture of each race so you had your black kids you had your white kids you had your asian kids a lot of that makeup would be a mixture of filipinos um and Japanese American kids like the mixture of them too and Filipino American kids and that mixture of that too Before I get into this topic. I want to paint a picture. I want to do a little bit of disclaimer. This is this experience is How I experienced it how I felt things were um, It may not necessarily be representative of other blacks living in mainland Japan or the countryside of Japan or even Okinawa Japan I can only paint this picture of what it was like for me living in Okinawa, Japan back in between 2002 and 2008. I can't speak on that now. I don't feel like the color of my skin was as much of an issue as it was for me just being American. I feel like me being an American was probably more of an issue than being black ever was. Matter of fact, I felt like black culture was highly embraced um, in Okinawa by the locals and I say embraced versus what a lot of people would be like would appropriate it because in America 
we often feel like our culture is appropriated when we've been rocking baby hair and cornrows and big gold hoop earrings and a lot of things that were for a long time been associated with being ghetto or a part of the black culture um, is now becoming popularized and it's become popularized by non-black people and it's become trendy because a non-black person had put it on that's where in America as a black person a lot of our like discontent comes from in terms of other races particularly let me I'm gonna put quite frankly white people um, when they adopt things of our culture because it's kind of like okay for instance Miley Cyrus when we've been twer twerking grinding all that other stuff out in the club for who knows how long right Miley Cyrus starts twerking Miley Cyrus now all of a sudden created twer twerking something that was considered very raunchy and disgusting now Miley Cyrus popularized it or Kim Kardashian she wears what they call box braids which is simply what cornrows has always been for us she popularized it she put it on she created it um, things like that is what I would consider misappropriating but in Okinawa the locals I don't think they ever ever claimed to have put any of that on I'm sure a lot of the black Americans that soldiers are Americans who live there have exposed Okinawans to the hip hop black culture and I don't feel like they've ever tried to take that from us. I don't think they've ever tried to take the title from us. I feel like it's very embraced it was very much embraced and celebrated. Um I take it as you will. Um but you know I felt like hip hop culture was pretty big there like there was a popular street um off of kadena air base called gate 2 street and at that time they sold a lot of urban clothing which was popular at that time which was baby your baby fat um your nike your babes your red monkey jeans your apple bottom jeans they have had all those brands your adidas um hip-hop music was a huge thing there if i had to say that was maybe like a top three genre music genre of that time on that island i would say hip-hop was like a top three that's how popular um, black culture or hip-hop was during the time I lived there um, and you can de debate me on that if you want um, if you've actually lived there during that time as I did but so with that being said I felt like being American was much of a problem like I never felt like I walked into a store a local Okinawan Japanese store and I was being watched. I never felt like that. I never felt uncomfortable for the color of my skin. I never felt like walking down a certain street I was in grave danger because I was black or I never felt like I was being judged by locals because I was black. I felt like if I've actually never felt uncomfortable or felt like I was judged by a local um, Okinawan. Um, if anything, I felt like discontentment occurred whenever um, tensions rose between the locals and Americans and this often occurred during times in which uh, an American would commit a crime towards an Okinawan so like I've said before relatively the crime level in Okinawa is very very low the people are very very nice sweet and have strong morals um, in 2008 months before my family and I moved from Okinawa, Japan. There were a series of rapes that occurred from the Americans onto the locals within a short amount of time. So tensions flared up between the locals and the Americans. So living on base at that time, we as Americans were locked down on base because there were protests by the lo the locals off the base. So the fear was that any Americans conducting leisure business or fun off base would be in grave danger because we just were under a lot of heat at that time. But nonetheless, I felt like those were the only times in which I could recall um, any tensions 
based off me just simply being American and not um, me being black. I know in general that the experience for a black person in Japan is going to definitely differ vastly depending on what part of Japan they're living in, how long they've been there, etc. My experience may differ from someone else living black in Japan, but that's my experience. So if you have any questions on my experience or more that you would like to know, uh, feel free to ask me any questions below. But other than that, thanks for watching. Bye.